Okay, so here we are. We're going to do our second in this series of hardware how-to videos. In this one, we're going to look at what it takes to use one of these Maxbotix LV Max Sonar Easy One ultrasonic range sensors. So we'll start with what we're going to use today in our little demonstration here. I've got my drawer full of jumper wires here. We're going to use some jumper wires. I've got two of the range sensors we're going to play with so we can see using them at the same time what that's like. Uh, a breadboard for wiring everything together and an Arduino Uno. And we're going to talk to it all using this little Microsoft Surface. So we'll talk briefly here about how these actually work. There's not a lot to it. Um, it's the same principle as in a sonar in a submarine. Uh, these send out a high frequency pulse of sound uh, that bounces off of something. When it bounces, it comes back and it receives the sound, the echo of the sound coming back and it measures the time it took for that and it can tell the distance to whatever the sound bounced off of to do that. So that's what we're going to be doing here today. So now we're going to go over to the computer screen and we're going to take a look at the sketch that's actually going to run this on the Arduino and then we'll come back and assemble all the pieces and we'll see if this actually works. Okay, here we are in the Arduino IDE. This is the little sketch we're going to be using to demo the Maxbotix brain sensors on the Arduino Uno card. So like we said before, the way we're going to be working with these Maxbotix sensors today, uh, each one's going to have two pins that we're going to work with on the Arduino card that's going to allow us to control the sensor and to receive the ranging output from it. The ranging pin, or the sensor pin we call it, is going to be an analog pin, and the control pin is going to be a digital pin that we can set to high and low. These first four constants here set up the four pins we're going to be using with the two sensors we're going to be working with today. As we dig into the code, you'll see where the rest of these constants and variables get used. So everything that happens within this is governed by this read and send all sensors function here. You can see in the loop pretty much all it does is calls that function and then delays 50 milliseconds and calls it again over and over. So within the read and send all sensors function, like the name kind of insinuates, we're going to use this for loop here to read each of the two sensors and load their output into this little array we have here called sensor readings. And then we're going to use, take the values in that array and we're going to send them out the serial port. So now we'll get down to the guts of how we're actually using the sensor in the read sensor method here. You can see we send in a sensor pin and a control pin that we're going to hit within the read sensor function. So each time we want to use, actually read one of the sensors, what we do is we first come in, we set the control pin to high. This tells the sensor to start ranging. Uh, we let that go on for 100 milliseconds, which is a little longer than it really takes, but we want to give it time to kind of settle down. Then we do an analog read from the sensor pin, which gives us the voltage value for that pin, which should be telling us the distance to whatever's bouncing sound back to the sensor like we discussed earlier. Then we use the set the control pin to low and let that sit for 100 milliseconds to let the sensor turn off and stop ranging and settle down so that we don't trigger any crosstalk with the other sensor when we turn it on. So that's pretty much the long and the short of how this works. As you can see it's all very simple. Um, there's just not much to it. But this is how we use these sensors to do collision avoidance in our robot Antwerp. So let's get down to the assembly of this. So we're going to use the breadboard so that we can share power for off of the card, off of one pin on the card to both of the sensors. So not that it matters, I'm going to use a black wire because it's traditional for the ground. And a red wire is going to go to the five volt pin on the Arduino. And we're going to hook both of these into the breadboard. Then we're 
to start hooking up to the sensors. So on the back of the sensors, it's a good thing I have my glasses on or I couldn't see it. But it starts with ground, then you've got the voltage pin, and then we've got a transmit pin, and we've got an analog pin, and those are what we're going to use for this. There's actually multiple ways to hook these up. Uh, what we're going to be doing is really kind of the simplest one. So since this is a red wire, we'll hook this one up to power. And we'll find a black wire to hook the ground to the ground line on the breadboard. There's that. And we'll hook this one up. Put it on the power line and a black one. Whoops. Let's see here. Okay, so there's our power connection. Now, come on. On the Arduino card, we're going to use an analog pin that we're going to actually read the voltages off of the sensors. And that's going to go to the analog pin on the sensors, which I believe is this one. And then we're going to put this one onto the receive pin, the serial receive pin on, on here, which really this is just going to be, this is going to go on a digital pin on the Arduino. And this is just used to control the sensor and turn it on and off. So we can start ranging and stop ranging with it. And we'll hook up the other one. I like doing the yellow one first, actually. Okay. And that's going to go to digital pin four. And then hook up the analog. And that's going to go to analog pin, actually this should be on one, and this one's going to be on analog pin two. Now the numbers of the pins I'm putting on here are arbitrary, but they have to match whatever's in the sketch that's going to be, that's going to be operating this on the Arduino. Okay, so in theory now, where's my USB cord? I can get it untangled here. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the Arduino. Okay, well let's see if it all works here. Uh, so we're going to look at this on the serial monitor in the Arduino IDE. And there we go, we are getting something. So now, if I take this one, I'm not sure if this is going to be the right or the left one. But if I put my hand over it, I'd say it's the right one. And you can see where it dropped down to 11 there. That's kind of the bottom value. And I take my hand away and it goes back up around 100. Hand over. Hand away. And now I can do the other one. Now one thing about these, and we'll talk more, we talked more about this in the, when we were looking at the sketch. One of the tricks of these, when you're doing two like this, is you have to be careful of what they call crosstalk. So because these are both putting out these high pitch, these high frequency signals, one can hear the other one's signal real easily. So you have to deal with this somehow. Typically the way I certainly do it is, is with timing. So you can control turning the, the sensor on and off turning the ranging on and off in the sensor to keep them from talking over each other and to keep the signals separate from each other. So that's a really important thing to do when you're using these. So that's pretty much it. That's what these do. 
Um, you can tell it's not very difficult to get them set up and use, and use them. We use them for collision avoidance on our robot Antwerp. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like this video if you do like this video, and we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel. We are Robbie. Thanks again. Bye.